You are taking a look at a somewhat wet and misty day here in Gardner, Maine, live at Hoke Field on the campus of Gardner Area High School. It's boys soccer, the Gardner Tigers, their arch rival, the Coney Rams, here in a Wednesday afternoon. Rob Kennedy here with Casey Johnson. Always good to get these two teams together. It doesn't matter the sport. No, not, not at all. This, this is uh, always a good rivalry. These two teams are pretty evenly matched up. You look at the Gardner Tigers at 2-1-1 uh, one one on the season. Nick Wallace's team, a very, very young team that he'll put out there. Looking down that roster, you've seen a lot of sophomores and juniors. Yes, you do. Uh, there's actually just one senior, and uh, Tucker Boudreau has done a fine job of leading this group. A little more veteran leadership on the Coney Rams overall. I don't have their record. It's been a little harder to, to track teams down this year, given it's been... Well, with everything, just a strange year with the uh, the COVID aspect of sports. I think it's just good that we're playing it all today. But Coney, a little more veteran experience and uh, some guys to watch out for, too, as well. And that team we'll talk about. Why don't we take a break? We'll come back and take a look uh, closer at these two teams. Got the starting lineups for you here at Hoke Field. We'll have that for you next. Coney and Gardner and boys soccer here on Munzing Media. Like cooking dinner? Call Caps' Pizza in Farmingdale. You can make the whole family happy with our award-winning pizza, sandwiches made on fresh baked bread, delicious nachos, or salads made to order. And don't forget the whoopie pies. We pride ourselves on fast, friendly service and an overall experience that's better than you might expect from a pizza place. So order Caps just tonight. Pick it up, have it delivered, or enjoy our dining room. Give us a call at 582-0522 or enjoy the convenience of online ordering at CapsLessPizza.com. Back here with you at Hoke Field in Gardner. You see the, both teams out warming up, getting set for the start of this contest. Tigers and Rams. Take a look at the way both teams will send things out today as far as their lineup and their shape. Coney on the left. James Gay has got a 3-5-2 going. Yeah, three five two, and uh, you know you, you get some kids that are stalwarts in the in the back in the midfield. Uh, Isaac Gammon that plays in the midfield, and. Uh, few other kids that I, I know pretty well Jake Varney in the back um, and uh, as you know the the keeper fairly well right Rob? Yeah, Brandon Maddour is going to be the goalkeeper for the Rams we'll look at him in just one second and uh, Patrick Manser in goal for the Tigers who start in that uh well, 4 4 2, but a diamond midfield is what we'll see out of uh, Nick Wallace's team. Yeah, and he's got uh, Braden DeRogi uh, playing at, uh, you know, holding central midfield, and uh, Casey Paul with Tweedy and uh, Caleb Gardner on the, w on the wing midfield. So, in that diagram, Paul would be up front, and, uh, and Drogi actually behind as a holding midfielder. Yeah, said? I think they, they flip flopped a little bit last week. I mean, uh, last game, so it, it depends. They play off each other well. Take a look at the goalkeepers first, starting with the Coney Rams, and they'll uh, put a junior in goal today. Brennan Medor will start for them, for Coach James Gay. If uh, needed, Cole Hamner is a guy who can come in as well. As the Rams on that far side of the field are on the field right now. The Garner Tigers, Patrick Manser, who played out in the field, the midfield, I believe, to start the season, has been moved into the goal. Yeah, and, and Patrick's played. He's no... Uh, rookie to playing goal he uh, played through the youth program and uh, he's technically very sound busy week for the Gardner Tigers this week the boys soccer team uh, off tomorrow will be back in action against Levitt at 3 30 here on Friday and then uh, no real time to rest just an overnight turnaround back here for a 10 o'clock kickoff on Saturday with Miranda Cook those black bears which will be an interesting contest uh, Miranda Cook saw play once this uh, year Washington play Lewiston lost that game 2-0 uh, which when you're playing Lewiston is a pretty respectable scoreline Miranda Cook a uh, fairly physical team like Donnie Beckwith's teams usually are yeah and, and he he looks at the the games that he's playing and uh, strategizes in, in that way. So Donnie will pack it in if he needs to or open it up. He's got the players to be able to do it. Yeah, he'll adjust. That's what I noticed against Lewiston is he really seemed like he was trying to pick spots for a counterattack, which probably makes a lot of sense with the firepower that Lewiston has. And it's hard to tell for me if they've been at the strength they were a year or two ago when they had Bilal Hersey, for example, Lewiston. Mm -hmm. But but I was very impressed by how Miranda Cook played. And I haven't seen Gardner since week one. They they got a tie against Haldale uh, that week. We had that game uh, on a much warmer, sunnier day than this one back across in Farmingdale. And it'll be interesting to see where, what Gardner's done as far as their development since then. Winning two and losing one sense. Yeah, and they move the ball very well. They they played Levitt at Levitt, which is a wider field. Um, this narrow field uh, that the Tigers are are on it for for their home games uh, tends to fit them pretty well. They can play direct if they need to, and uh, you know sometimes this field tends to not give style points, but hmm. uh, but you know excitement there is. 
We'll definitely have that today. And again, it's Coney and Gardner. You can't uh, expect anything else besides excitement. You play Scrabble with these two teams and probably still have a, a pretty entertaining <laughs> contest. Absolutely. Also for Gardner High School games, we talked about the soccer games up on the schedule. Tomorrow night, another Munzing Media broadcast. Gardner football played Marina Cook last night. And 7-on-7 seven seven action tomorrow night, 6 p.m. start. The uh, Madison Bulldogs coming to town. Nice. At home. That's great. Yeah, right here down uh, below us. And, of course, all Gardner home games and football, boys and girls soccer, and field hockey all broadcast right here on Munzing Media. We thank all the sponsors who make that possible. You see the Tigers out there wearing the blacks at home. Coney and those whites. Gardner attacking the goal down to our right. That's where Brendan Medor waits. Mm -hmm. And Patrick Manser down to our left. The Coney Rams going right to left at him. So you have a senior in the back, uh, Tucker Boudreau, with, uh, with uh, Colby Vassell. Uh, so you have senior, junior, and then uh, they're sandwiched uh, by uh, two sophomores that are gaining experience every day. I mean, a big thing for the Tigers this year is to gain that experience and see what lies ahead for Nick Wallace's team. We're set to go. Two officials. We've seen every contest. They're not seeing three officials very much. I think COVID's the real reason for that. So. Absolutely. One on each side. Over on that far side goes out past Caleb Gardner for Gardner, but it's a throw for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Right back in. Now back up ahead, that was knocked away from Rice Bushy. Yeah, and Bryce has been a happy, uh, happy find for Coach uh, Wallace. Uh, I think his pace is good. Uh, his skill level is improving every day. As a sophomore, he's uh, stepped into a, a nice role. Colby Vassell for Gardner, shielding the ball. To play that back, a little danger here. Almost knocked away. Tucker Boudreaux. Josh Jacobson couldn't keep that in, and the Rams will get their first possession. It's former Gardner guy Isaac Gammon getting the... Ball back in play. Maybe a chance now for the Rams down that far side. Andrew Boston is there. And Garner will blast that out. And again, uh, with with the mist, it's going to be a tough uh, tough play to feet uh, constantly. Uh, if they're playing through balls, it's 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 going to be hard to stop that ball. You're going to see a lot of run-ons, quite a few throw-ins, and a lot of balls going right to the keeper if they try to play it up the middle. Absolutely, it's a slick surface. Cameron Dewan knocked that down. Tigers with it here. It's Casey Paul, the sophomore. Now Gardner down far side. Caleb Gardner. And there's an example of what you were just talking about, Absolutely. Casey. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's hard. You're going to have to play those right to feet. Um, and, and the guys, are. it's going to have to be a slow, choppy game. Of course, the thing, too, is that affects the goalkeeper. I mentioned if it does pop in on goal, then it's easy pickings for the keeper. But if it comes in with velocity and skips, that can lead to trouble sometimes absolutely yeah it's uh it, it is it's it's one of those things where footing uh because this is a uh a, a heavy clay base um with very little sand i mean uh sand and uh loam on it for grass uh you're gonna find that uh slip slips are gonna happen too nicely played camel sal over there and just ran out of space now oakfield is legendary as far as the uh the makeup and its composition <laughs> and coach rob munzing when he Coach football here for his Hoke Lake in a few occasions. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Munzing wished he had uh, a, a true mutter like uh, the, uh, uh, oh my goodness, the uh, Chicago Bears running back, uh, Sayers. Gail just Sayers, yeah. Gail Sayers was a great mutter. He had to be in those days, yeah, more turf. Absolutely. Yes, he was. Accepted by Taylor Tweedy almost, but he had taken away. Will Campbell now. Coney is a number 10 that I don't think I had in my initial roster. We can take a look at that, Casey, and they, see if you find they a 10. They threw a wrinkle at us, huh? Potentially. Yeah, there is no 10. Darogi outside, and that's going to run out into touch and a throw in for the Coney Rams. Yeah, you saw some nice buildup through uh, through this side of the field by Coney, uh, speaking of number 10, uh, working with Gammon, trying to build up the ball. Is that almost him, perhaps? Because he was, I like, think, going to play that left side. That left Possibly. Side. Yeah. And he wears eight, so I'm looking to see if there's an eight out there. I'll we'll see. I don't see an eight. I'm guessing that's all I'll see. I'm going to go with that for now. Eight was in warm-up. So. Was he, though? Okay, yeah. so maybe not. Maybe not. Isaac Gammon for the Rams. Now on this near side. 
So if you hear someone call us Nemo, we can usually hear that up here with no crowd. Mm. Played into the middle. That's Sajed Albadri. Booted ahead by Abraham. A long ball. Dealt with nicely, though. Tucker Boudreaux there to kind of throw himself on the grenade. Absolutely. His, his speed, uh, speed makes up for a lot of mistakes made through the midfield. This is a Tigers throw, as you see, and it is Boudreaux with it. Yeah. And uh, part of, uh, part of uh, what I said earlier, uh, Casey Paul's playing that holding midfielder with Derogi up top. So yeah. his defensive responsibilities are going to be uh, pretty solid working with Boudreaux and, and Vassal. Abraham trying to go outside. Now as Biazas. Gabe Biazas, a junior, wearing number one out there in the red and whites. Andrew Boston can't keep this in. Throw into Gardner. Ping pong with a head knocked around. Jake Varney, the junior for Coney, knocking that ahead. The Tigers put it right away. Maybe a chance there for Gardner nice here. Good. It's a good ball, but again, coming over nicely, Cameron Dewan just did enough to make LaSalle know he was there, and Cam had to slow down. Nicely played by the defense. Uh, Derogi has actually turned into being a, a quite uh, valuable player in the midfield for, for Coach Wallace. A uh, lot of touches last game, um, and uh, I think as, as they play that um, quick one-two with uh, he and Casey Paul, you'll see more and more activity. So Manser come out to play that. Again, had to be alert as he knew it was skipping in on him. Mm -hmm. Now the Tigers once again fed over the top to LaSalle, and once again the Rams deal with it. That time Justin Perry. Nicely played. Taylor Tweedy. He's number three out there in black. Already a good quick pace to this game here in Gardner. It is. Delivered toward the goal. No problem from Maduro, you wouldn't think. And there isn't. Maduro taking his time, letting his team get back upfield, pushing back. Nicely played by Maduro out wide. Yusuf. Oh, Yusuf Abraham. Number 15 is number 10. Don't make that change. Gotcha. Nope, go ahead. I'll steal your pen. Mm -hmm. Abraham, number 10. Okay. Awesome. Well, good. Glad we didn't have to have uh, too long to figure that out. And thanks, Rob <laughs> Munsey, for getting us the info. Here's Derogi. And a bit of trouble over there. Derogi. Yeah. Dribble through traffic for a moment. Gammon took it away. Nicely played. Time and space with Derogi is, is, is an important part of his game. Well, Tucker Boudreaux took some chances there, did it on the ball, but the Tigers got it away. Doing. Couldn't keep that in as that rolls out into touch. Derogi wasting no time. That's headed into the area. And Madora right out to play that. Had to be alert as he had... A Gardner player bearing down on him. Bryce Bushy, I believe. Yep. It was. And uh, no hesitation by by uh, the goalkeeper at all. Kobe Vassal up to play that. Tigers on it again. Nicely laid off by Casey Paul. Yeah, Tweedy just couldn't get there because Cameron Dewan for Coney was very alert to that play. Both teams, a lot of energy here in the early going. Both teams, as you would expect, up for this game. Tucker Boudreaux gets it in. The Rams take possession. Abraham. Nicely played. Right in the middle. You see the footing is there. It's a little tricky for Sajid Albadri. Albadri almost got back in the ball. Has it here. There's a man out wide. That's Gabe uh, Biazis. Biazis into the area. A little trouble for the Tigers. They need to get rid of this. Kobe Vassal gets it to the corner. Not really away. Gardner might be able to clear it here via Casey Paul. Paul almost dispossessed. Caleb Gardner came to the rescue, but it's a Rams throw. Nope, Gardner takes it. Mm. Another one off Caleb Gardner. Yeah, so did I. Now the Rams taking it right back again. It's really turned into a midfield battle. Isaac Gammon shoots from distance. Just too high. But, Ambitious shot, but one you take. Yeah, one you take in a day like today. You're going to get those skips, and and uh, and the keeper's going to have to find his footing. Anytime you get one on goal, hockey or soccer, it doesn't make any difference. You might be able to 
catch lightning in a bottle. Absolutely. We uh, we used to play that way on here. with The, the Skowhegan game, I remember, was a couple of years in a row. We played them under the lights, and uh, it was the old crash in that theme. Take yep. the shot and crash the net. Nicely played by Derogi. Right back in the midfield for the Tigers, Casey Paul. Worked outside once again. They're trying to find Bryce Bushy up front. Paul again. Into the area, knocked down over by Albadri. So Jed Albadri will take it up himself. Nicely played. It might turn into something for Gardner here if Biazzas can get to this. It's cut off very nicely by Tucker Boudreau. Another defensive play. Very good defensive play by the senior. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's almost a, a situation where you almost want to play a sweeper, you know, instead of the flat back four. This could be trouble, but too much of the ball shown to Bedore, the keeper, and he boots it away. Two on one, developing there for Gardner for a moment. Gammon up over the top. Will Campbell tried to knock that ahead. The throw goes Coney's way. Ten minutes gone here in the first half. Glad you're joining us from Misty Gardner, Maine. Rams and Tigers. Those old rivals. Oh, stepped. Dewan squares it. Rams back with it. Abraham. Abraham puts that toward the goal. Manser. No trouble with that. No, he's he's technically pretty sound. He's uh, stepping in for the second game of the year for the Tigers, and he's done a great job so far. The only thing is it takes him out of the midfield and yeah, kind of hurts the uh, the Tigers' depth a bit. A little bit. I think uh, I think with uh, if you look at the Coney bench with five players total, um, I think with this timeout or this uh, break in the action at, at the half, you're going to see teams play with a shorter bench yeah, and I think so get too. away with it. You get that breather for just a minute or so, that's all you need. And you can talk strategy and whatnot, and uh, it works. A couple of subs coming in here, in fact. We'll see if we can get them. On the far side of the field here at Gardner. Sam Arsenal in for Gardner, and then number eight. I uh, bet also Liam came in for Coney. Yep. Sewalt came in as well. I think that was number 20. Yeah. Drie Alcatea. Yeah, it is Akate. He's out there now walking away from the ball, and Isaac mm -hmm. Gammon will do the honors to get us back underway. Another situation with narrow sidelines is a, is a big throw. Very good throw is by Gammon. Alcate nice. over that corner lets that go. Here's a square ball headed high. Nice service. Still dangerous, though. Tigers needed that clear, and they got it. McConey right back on the ball. Abadri. Gammon. Takes the long-range shot again. Doesn't get through the Tigers' wall. Now it's Alcatea. Gardner working, or Coney rather, working that far side. On the right wing. And there's space over there, too. Potentially, if Abraham can walk the tightrope. Here he comes. Oh, he did. He danced on the sidelines. I think he earned a corner for his team. He did. That was tremendous work by use of Abraham, the freshman. Yeah, he uh, beat Casey Paul and then turned around and beat uh, Colby Vassell on the end line. I think he'll take the corner as well. Yeah, it looks like it. It is number 15, Abraham. Remember in the COVID rules, five players each side inside the area, not counting the keeper. Yeah, we saw a little de deception last game. Uh, coaches were lining them outside the box. So referees had to be very uh, cautious of what was going on coming in and out of the box. First corner of the game was right at the post, and Gardner gets it away. Alcatay in a race for this. Rams come up with it. Varney. Up high to Varney. And they'll work it ahead again. Now it's just too far, though. It rolls ahead of Yusuf Abraham, and... As a goal kick this time for the Tigers. Almost 14 minutes in the 14th minute is where we are here at Gardner High School. Still looking for our first goal. Yeah. Feels tilting a little towards the Coney side right now. Um, Gardner's had some good opportunities, but uh, seems to be tilting down towards the Prey Street field. Also, the Gardner Tigers under a normal circumstance. But with no fans, the best way to watch the game is to have one, one single setup for all the teams. <laughs> well, soccer and football, anyway. Field hockey is a 
the usual location, I believe, here at Gardner High School. Mm -hmm. They tried it here. This field's in, in, in pretty rough shape right now. And, uh, well, that's for it. Field with, hockey. with just so much use, it's, mm -hmm. it would deteriorate quickly. That's soft Varney out of bounds. Yeah. It works out well, though. I mean, I know most people would rather... Parents especially would like to be at the game. I know a lot of the viewers from out of state or watching friends, family members, their old high schools play are happy that all the games are broadcast. It's good mm -hmm. for the parents as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this is a good call out for the AstroTurf coming. If it, yeah. you know, one one straight facility that they can uh, channel everything through. I mean, Morris can give a give the Tigers one of their fields. They have two turf fields now. Is that shot from Allenbaugh rolls in on goal? Oh, Lewiston does. Morse does now. Oh, Morse does. They have the new high school coming. There's a turf field there and the old uh, oh, turf the, field as well. The recreational facility, yes. Now the Tigers. Bryce Bushy puts the brakes on. Right at the top of the area. He's trying to find Darogi. Isaac Gammon knocked that out, but Gardner's still with it. And Bryce is one of those kids that went off his, his leg there, but uh, he's finding confidence more and more every game. Uh, and he's looking very uh, comfortable. Only a sophomore as well on this young Tigers team. Yeah. It's going to suit the boys uh, down the road very well. Varney the junior. Called for an illegal throw, so the Tigers will take advantage of that. A good position to get the ball back in play for Gardner. Josh Jacobson on the throw. Played it back. Tucker Boudreaux wide open. He held on to it too long, and that allowed the Rams to knock that ahead. And they'll get possession here as that rolls out into touch. Yeah, a little quicker play is going to suit the Tigers a little bit better. Uh, you know, we used to call it one and done, and uh, that's important. Ahmed Asalam is very quick, the senior, number eight for Coney, and he was forcing the issue, resulting in that turnover. Yeah. A dangerous play called on the Rams. Indirect kick for Gardner. 16 minutes gone. Neither team with only a 10 bell chance so far. No, not at all. And, and you know, here's the thing. The, the, one, of the, one of the big keys to both teams is the pressure they put on the defense. And, and that's, uh, that's like a, a ride or a forecheck in hockey. Same thing. If you put that pressure on, there are going to be mistakes. Headed back toward the goal. The Rams look to get this out. Oh, Gimme, you take it there for a moment by the Tigers, and Coney does get this clear. Campbell outside to Alcatea. Here's that short long there. Um, played long. Manser still inside the area. A little hard to tell from our vantage point, but he's right there in the lines. Keeper always knows where that is. That's why he picked that up. Gammon went high to head that ahead, and now Isaac Gammon with it again. Pass up the middle. He wanted Will Campbell, and Campbell has it for the shot. Big hit. A bit of a palm stinger there for Manser, but he held on to it after letting it fall. No one else in the vicinity. Good, simple positioning and uh, easy save for him. Yeah, good poise as well because the good drive in that shot. Yeah. That's the thing, though. He knew that when he let it go, he had plenty of time. I see play by the freshman. Battle of 17s, and Allenbaugh knocked that away from Campbell for the Coney throw. Isaac Gammon says, I'd like that, please. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's a little deceiving on the opposite side because that line, uh, the boundary uh, or the sideline hugs the uh, track. So it's it's hard to uh, to see. Do it again. They'll just back Gammon up a little bit. Doing. Nice service. That was good, but no one there in white. So just hop up high from answer. Good attempt, though. It was the right play. No one to connect on that. Tweedy couldn't play that. It was a near impossible situation for him. Yeah, a lot of spin on that ball. Right. Oh, game and had eight in the middle. Yeah, also, Liam was open, not anymore. Nope. Allenbaugh out of play, and Gammon can try it again. Good long throw. Might turn into something here if Campbell can take it away. He's got a corner kick. It was a good recovery there for a moment by Tucker Boudreau, but he couldn't save it. It is a corner. And Abraham over to take it. Now we Good do. look at Yusef Abraham setting up. Mm -hmm. Right footer to try to in-swing this. I think he's going to, he, yeah, he's going to be a right footer. So it's going to in-swing, which is going to mean a little bit of trouble for Patrick Manser. If served hard and low. 
Ibrahim there actually go. putting that Nicely right on played. goal and played well by Manser too because I don't think he was expecting that. No, not at all. Good velocity on that. It curled well for Abraham. Just a freshman. I've been impressed by him in the first 15. Yeah, he plays with great pace and poise. Uh, he's, he's moving the ball very well. A oh, little mistake in the back. Bushy giving a little pressure. Curry, though, recovered nicely and kicked it ahead. He had to give the throw away in possession, but he'll take that. It allows his Rams to regroup. A couple subs for Gardner coming in here. Jackson Boudreau. Yeah, he's in the contest 16, I think. Yeah. LaSalle was out. He's back in, number one up front. Yeah, so they put Colby Moody in for uh, for Bryce. To number four, Moody. Yeah. Pass was going toward him. Jake Varney for Coney cut that out. Nicely played. Abraham yeah. tried to work that ahead. He's now bumping with Darogi. A little bit of physicality. That's good. Abraham oh. scuffed it. <laughs> He's rolled his eyes. You can see all the way from across the field. The rogue will I didn't let that ride. I thought he might. Yeah. Cohen will look to set this up here. A bit of a dangerous pass. We got through to Gammon. And now it's Salbadri. Uh, Alcatea couldn't keep it into the far touch line. There's a throw in and a break for us. We're officially at exactly 20 minutes. That's what remains halfway through the first half. Still goalless here at Hoke Field and Gardner between Coney and the Tigers on Munsing Media. At a family's time of loss, making arrangements with those you know and trust can lessen the burden so you may better focus on preparations and services. Family First Funeral Homes and Cremation Cares Network of long-established family-managed firms is here for families like yours, providing experienced and compassionate service throughout Central Maine. They are Lowry Brothers and Wheeler Funeral Homes in Fairfield and Oakland, Knowlton and Hewins and Roberts Funeral Homes, serving Augusta and Winthrop, and Staples Funeral Home for families in Gardner, Maine. Each staff is experienced at accommodating the unique needs of the families we serve as well as pre-arranging services for individuals. All of the Family First locations stay true to our traditions and commitment to the communities we've served for decades. Together, we join with you to celebrate lives well-lived. Family First Funeral Homes and Cremation Care, where your family is our family. Coney Rams on the sideline and a great day in Gardner. Brightened up by the soccer we've seen so far. 20 minutes in, no goals, but uh, it's been an intense battle. Yeah, definitely. And and I think the Coney coaches over there breaking down the game a little bit more for the guys. Uh, it, the pace is good. They're moving the ball well. Uh, in these circumstances, they're doing a great job. Nick Wallace over talking to the Gardner Tigers. You see them breaking their huddle on the sideline coming out here. And the ball still sits. On the Gardner end defensively, a throw in for... I wasn't sure who they called when they went to break because the players heard the whistle. The ref came over with his arms X'd up to stop the clock. And we see the Gardner Tigers have possession. Over that far side of the field. Mm. Josh Jacobson set to get going once he's given permission. Yeah, I thought there was two ball boys over there. It's uh, uh, The, the uh, referee is uh, standing next to coach on the far side. So no five-star chances in the first half, really. Both no. teams trying to break down the wall of the defense and get something going. But you mentioned, Casey, it was going to be difficult just with the field conditions, the wet day here, trying to settle anything inside the area. Yeah, it's going to be hard. But, you know, they, they, they're going to have their chances. And they'll then they'll, they will definitely come. Maybe one here for the Tigers, perhaps. Nicely settled. Oh. Doing couldn't get that away. It was spinning on him. Boudreau wants the shot. Not a bad one, but it's well high. Taken. Yep. The best chance for the Tigers so far today by the junior, Jackson Boudreau. Yeah, breaking the shape a little bit, moving towards the central midfield to, to take that shot. Good bid. The best chance for Coney was Isaac Gammon, who put a good stinger on Patrick Manzo, the gardener keeper. Yeah. That was a good shot by Boudreau that didn't test Bernard Mador. A good velocity on the shot. Nice so. out. Varney. Being harassed by Colby Moody. Now the Rams in the middle of the field. They'll try to work it downfield. Didn't get very far, though. Maybe here. Out it ahead. 
Use of Abraham giving chase to this. Look out if he gets it, but he won't. Good work by Tucker Boudreau. Yeah, well played. Using his speed and getting wide and moving to his uh, cousin. Jackson downfield. He was looking for Cam Lassell. It was intercepted. And Abraham can't keep that in. He disagrees, but it'll be a Tiger throw. It's close. He's right there in that orange line. <laughs> Von Clark spying it. Yeah, good look right down the line, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. Tucker Boudreau on the throw, and Abraham called for dangerous play, and he's not thrilled about that either. No, that one's a tough one. And that's that was, what I was going to say. I don't, I don't blame him. I don't yeah, blame him at all. There was some good distance between him and the defender. Yeah, so. The leg was high, but there wasn't anybody really close. No. This is indirect. Tucker Boudreau will take this. This should be on net. Oh, close to it. Played. Do you put that on net even though it's indirect? I would. I would. See just if because there's so many mistakes that can be made. It's just like a corner kick, you know. It, it, they put it on Patrick Manser earlier, and uh, you, you're gaining chances. The chances of him sucking that ball in and, and making the save without a rebound are slim to none. If you was watching some years ago when I first was calling soccer here in Maine, same type of situation. The kid did put it on goal, and the keeper didn't move once. Just let it go in. <laughs> Massive celebrations. The keeper just picked it out of the ball, rolled it back yeah. out, and the referee had to inform the, the team. I think it was Skowhegan, actually, that uh, they didn't score. Yeah, they did not score. <laughs> the first time and only time I've ever seen that happen. Yeah. I think it was against every goaltender instinct to uh, not pick up the ball. Right, right. It's a goal kick for the Tigers here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, also Liam on that far side trying to work some magic, but just uh, couldn't keep it in. Yeah, there's a good balance now. It's coming out of the huddles, uh, seem that both teams are uh, trying to figure it all out. Casey Paul brought it down. A little heavy first touch for him, unfortunately, and allowed the Rams to take it away. And maybe a chance here for El Badri. Nicely played. And ran right into a wall. Three Tigers right there. Yeah. Paul spooned that ahead. It was intercepted. Hmm. Difficulty here for the Rams to get it free. Gammon will try. Yeah. Varney did a good job of breaking it down and uh, keeping it uh, keeping it in play for the, the Rams. Abraham nice. wanted it in that near side, and we couldn't get it to him. Gammon trying the 1-2, got it ahead to Will Campbell. Oh, nice ball. doing gammon it's kind of funny watching uh these guys uh, after last game on a dry field uh some of the kids that were shining uh aren't doing as uh, as well and some of the ones that really are pulling together are the more direct players so i got a question now because uh, we thought 15 was 10 yusuf abraham but 15 is out there now <laughs> i'll find out at halftime maybe who uh the mysterious number 10 and 15 may be. Nicely For played by 13. Coney Rams. Well, 13 I know was Justin Perry. Nicely played. Got that out of danger. and Maybe set something up here as the ball's in the area. Yeah. Also Liam. Works some magic in the middle to Will Campbell. Nice ball. Also Liam outside. That deflects out for a corner. Scratch that. That was Dury Alcatea. And Alcatea was, oh, thought he was going to take the kick. He won't. Alcatea's feet are, uh, are tremendous. He's uh, dancing on the sidelines quite well in this weather. So Yusuf Abraham, we think. Yeah. Listen to his number 15. So we'll go with him. And I'll try it at halftime. We'll see who that is. He's an outswinger played down. And bouncing Nicely around done. in the area is uh, panic-inducing for a moment, but Gardner got it away. Varney. Justin nice. Perry now for Coney. El Badri. Oh, that's a decent ball through. Yeah, it really is. Oh, that's a, a foul call. Yep. That's an easy one called. Yeah. And we'll find out who uh, that player is later. In 14 and a half minutes, I'll make a little rundown if I have time to go across the field and, and that was see what old, I can find. The old rule in college was never foul in the offensive third, mm. and that's a tough one. Well, the opponent's area, too, is even tougher. Yeah, really is. Nice ball in. Let's go out of play. and Tigers have this, I think. I don't bounced off uh, Abraham's head. It did. What? Oh. No, I guess not. Guard a player touched it on the way out. Hmm. Isaac Gammon will take the throw. 
Both players just kind of froze around for a bit. Nice job shielding by Gammon. Moody. Right. Nicely played by Moody. Stolen away again, though. Abraham trying to play that down the far side and does that well. Great ball. Dere Alcatea over there. And he's got a throw for the Rams. Hmm. Al Salim and Alcatea both trying to work over on that right wing. Hmm. Abraham. Very crafty freshman, Abraham. A solid defense by the Tigers, too. See yeah. Arsenal getting in and forcing it out into touch. Yeah, and in, in a in newer role, he usually has been playing up by, up uh, on top, and he's uh, playing the wing midfield now and good solid minutes. Gammon wants it, takes it. Blocked by the Tigers' defense, Boudreau. Albadai back, uh, Albadri rather, back up into the play. Taken down by Josh Jacobson for Gardner. That's a great play by Josh. To Rogi. He hasn't had much of the ball so far today. No, and that's where uh, that's that failure piece uh, where they got to really start playing it through Derogi and, and Paul to get their build up. Uh, once you get into that big, big uh, direct ball, uh, it gets a little sloppy for them. Well, thanks to some of the Coney fans watching to help us out with the uh, mystery we have here. We'll figure out Yusef Abraham is number 15. It's 10 we're trying to. Decide who that is. It might be important, too, because he's been in the action quite a bit. It's the one player we don't have on the yeah. Rams roster. So we'll take a look at the comments at uh, halftime. And appreciate the assistance. Glad you're watching, whether you're in Augusta or Gardner or anywhere watching around the world. Here's a chance oh, for the trouble. Rams. No. Well, offside. He is offside. Alcatea was through, but the referee right there with his hands on his hips. Yeah, and... and, and this mystery number 10 is playing that wing midfield in, in a five midfield set. So he is going to be active both defensively and offensively. Nicely played by Gammon. Yeah, Rose very well for that. Yeah. Subs coming in for Gardner. Three of them, in fact, off the bench. Tweedy back in. Bushy back Bushy's in. Bushy's back in, too. So number three, Taylor Tweedy, the junior. Bryce Bushy, the and Caleb Gardner. sophomore. And Caleb Gardner, right. Back in all three of those subs from Nick Wallace. The one thing you haven't seen from Coney is, uh, and Gardner does it very little with Alamba, um, is changing out back. You like to keep a little continuity with uh, your defenders. And uh, Coney hasn't changed or subbed at all. And on that back three. Played. Trying to play that through to Will Kim. What's well, broken up? Back on it once again. The Coney Ramps. Also Liam ahead. Once again looking for Dari Alcatea. That's a throw for Coney over there. Yeah, tough one for Boudreau. That that's so tight to the sideline and that, that skill level, especially as wet as it is, uh, is is difficult. Also Liam gets it back in. Will Campbell into the area. Tigers. Nice out by Put Paul. it away. Plenty of open space over here on the right wing as well as it comes all the way through to Cam LaSalle. Tigers looking to counter here. LaSalle playing it into space, but blazing back to clear that away. Sajet Albadri. Allenbaugh. His shot. Cannonades off Gammon. Did you have captains? He's wearing a captain's armband. That was trying to decipher... Here's a chance oh, for Dash for the Tigers. Good. That bounced all the way through. Gardner's there. Cleared out into safety by Jake Varney. It's a throw for the Tigers. Caleb Gardner almost found himself alone with the ball. <laughs> Just bounced a little too high for him to settle. Bryce Bushy on the throw. Played all the way back. Laid it into the area, but not for very long. Nicely, oh. the ball played long. That'll force Patrick Manser out to win the race and sky it away. In that situation, uh, Gardner's got to be pretty happy because uh, Patrick's a, a seasoned field player and he can uh, make that play pretty easily. 
Had to do it, too, with Will Campbell potentially getting behind the defense. But he wasn't going to beat Manser to the ball. No, you're right. Some of the keepers are a lot better with their hands and their feet sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. And the other guy who's been playing the midfield quite a bit, reliable with the leg. It's beneficial with plays like that. And more and more so with the rule changes constantly uh, hampering goaltenders. They don't make it easy for them. No. Although, fielders say they're protected any time the ball comes near them. <laughs> the refs do tend to take a, a dim view of anyone getting too close to the keeper on a 50-50 ball. Yes, it's true. You have players like uh, uh, Schumacher and Zoff that used to just take liberties in the, in, <laughs> in the box. Uh, doesn't happen anymore. Back in the rough and tumble good old days, right? Yeah, Schumacher was a, <laughs> a, a man. He, he, he was a monster in there. Oh, Andrew nice Boston. And a lot of these kids know each other through uh, through the Dirigo and the Gardner Fire program. Right. So they, they've played against or, or with each other for a while. Gammon in a good position for Coney for this throw. Bounce toward Campbell. Campbell finds two Tigers there. And we'll do it again. Gammon taking an eye out in the area. Back toward Campbell again. Gammon can serve this. Doesn't get through. Gets the corner, though. Is still in Staples. Had no choice but to no. bash it over the goal line. Yeah, and he he just had to make that stab at it just to make sure it didn't squeak through. And that gets through. It, uh, it's a, a situation where a lot of things can go terribly wrong if you're the Gardner Tigers. It can be problematic. As this can be. Another corner for Coney. Yusuf Abraham ready to go. Out swinger, nicely played by Dylan Staples. He'll do it again. Yeah, just a little too low on that out swinger and gave Staples the easy opportunity. That's better. Good nice service goal. and got all the way through and out for the goal kick. Now you see a lot of strategies by coaches now. Um, you know, with five v five in the zone, you don't have that that player hugging the post anymore. The back post, front post, you don't have the numbers up that you usually would have um, before. So it's it's good to watch a little man to man action in the zone. Nice ball out by Puck, uh, Tucker Boudreau. Almost roll all the way through to LaSalle. It did. The Rams failed to play it. Well, they have it here. Gammon settles it down. Play over to this left wing. Gammon with it again. Doing. Oh. Doing with plenty of space. The Tigers letting him run on. No trouble for Tucker Boudreau to clear that out. Now it's Casey Paul ahead trying the long ball to LaSalle. Nice ball by LaSalle. Right in the middle. Bushy. But he was shielded away by two defenders, and that let Medora come out and play it. Yeah, and, and again, weather situa situations are going to tend to uh, cause that power dribble, as we call it. like what Varney and Albadri both did there, though, just kind of shielding the player off. He had nowhere through. Mm -hmm. Foul called on the Tigers. It's a free kick to Coney. Mm -hmm. Just to the shade upfield of that midfield stripe. And this could be interesting. Isaac Gammon, we already know he's got a leg. Here it comes. A bouncer into the area toward the goal. and Nicely played by Tweedy. Oh, still bouncing oh. around in there, though. Here's an opportunity, and there they score. <laughs> the mystery player. <laughs> Rams take the 1-0 lead, and yeah, it bounced around to that area, and Coney, 35 minutes in, has the 1-0 lead. A lot of ping pong in there. It was it was a difficult ball. Actually, great finish though. Once yeah. it came to him, calm, cool, collected, and poised, and a bouncing ball that was rifled into the back of the net. Three balls that went off the Gardner defenders back out, and they gave it another chance. And uh, ten finished nicely. Watch it again. Yeah, once it bounces in there, you know you're in for a tough time. Mm -hmm. That's a situation where the Rams just can't get it out. Yeah. And watch the finish. One. That might have been a handball on, on Boudreaux. Thanks. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And that's a hard one. You know, uh, you, again, uh, Patrick's not new to being a keeper, but experience comes into play a little bit. And I think on that that second hop, he probably could have come out and played it. And that's a hard one. Tough one, though, as it bounces in the area like that. Right. Abraham going through pylons for a moment. He has it back. 
Now Badri. It's knocked down by Casey Paul. The Tigers trail 1 0. They'll go in the 35th minute. Yeah. You know, and you, you're starting to see it again that breakdown. Uh oh. The Gardner players aren't getting that those touches. Oh, there he is again. Right yeah. off the crossbar that time. Manser had it played. That was high and just off the bar. Yeah, well taken. Almost 2 0. The bar and Manser both. Mm. I think both there to make that save, but Manser didn't touch it. So it's a goal kick for the Tigers. You know, it, it looks as though Coney's sticking to the script of playing it through the midfield, of playing it through Isaac Gammon, playing it through um, their other, I think they have two different midfielders uh, playing there, uh, where Gardner has gone away from Casey Paul and uh, Braden Derogi, and it's hurting them a little bit. See, the throw is over there. No one seems to know right now. It's Coney Ball. Players sprawling. No, the Tigers have it. <laughs> I didn't know. The players didn't no. know. Now it is Coney Ball as Varney intercepts. Gardner right back on it. Casey Paul. Played outside. He was looking for Taylor Tweedy. The pass never reached him. Now a long run for Will Campbell. Campbell trying to get by Tucker Boudreau. It's actually a pretty good battle between the two of them. Tigers trying to work that away to Rogie outside to Tweedy. He was dispossessed. Nicely played by Rogie, though. Doing. Cameron nope. Doing can't keep that in on the near sideline. 238 remaining in the first half. 1 0 lead for Coney. The goal in the 35th. The ball played into the area. The Rams capitalized after the Tigers couldn't clear. I like that play by Tweedy, letting it go on uh, instead of playing it to feet. Uh, smart play, seeing if you can play it off the defender. Abraham picked Tarogi's pocket, and then Allenbaugh returned the favor. Tarogi outside. Staples has to run it down, but he keeps it in. Good recovery. This pass picked off, and the Rams have it once again. Coney with under two to work on now. They'll play that. Does it skip and stay in? Nope, not in this no. wet surface. No, not and at a goal all. Goal kick to the Tigers. Yeah, they seem to be working the sidelines pretty well. Both teams uh, getting their opportunities. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more in in the middle, but uh, you know, every every team's going to battle in the in the this uh, inclement weather. weather. I have liked how they use the, they have used the flex well though. They really have, uh, and and laying it softly too, which is very hard. Gamut has been a stalwart back there, in the middle of the field. Abraham back to Gamut again. Now the Rams bringing it back. Varney pass on the near side. Campbell, Laconi Jr. might have some something going on that far side. It was a tough ball to be brought down. Huge opportunity. It's a great effort out there to bring that down by Andrew Boston, but he couldn't quite do it. Here's the long shot that'll Ambitious. float over the crossbar. Abraham figured he'd have a go. <laughs> one minute to go in the half. Why not? Especially with a one-nil lead. Corner or goal kick? It'd be a goal kick, wouldn't it? I, don't I thought it touched I'd... it on the way out. The Rams claiming it was deflected in the way out. I didn't see that. I didn't see that either. Not in that situation. Would have been a slight touch, if anything. Could have happened. I, I don't think there was anybody aware. that close. I, I didn't think there was either. Yeah. Nice step by 16. Yeah, well played by Albadri. Now the Tigers. Derogi may have something going here as a man arriving on that far side and Gardner. Gardner played up well by Abraham. Good though. service. Oh, Maybe a chance here. Too many ran, uh, Tigers, rather, in the area. Tweedy probably should be the one taking that shot. Mm -hmm. And it goes high, and Medora comes out to claim. Good opportunity. Yeah, Tweedy and Bushi both there at the same time. Yep. And that's how the first half will end. A spirited battle, as it always seems to be, between these two rivals. Gardner and Coney, the one goal by the visitors. They scored in the 35th minute. The Rams lead 1-0 at halftime. And we'll take a look at the goal. And again, we saw when it happened. When that bounces in the area, you, if you're the keeper, your heart's in your throat. Yeah, really, it's it's difficult and little indecision. But I think uh, I think he made the right one on on that one, staying back off his uh, on his line. I don't think looking at that again, there was really much that Patrick Manser could do. That was just mass no. confusion inside the box. No, that's stepping big, and that's a hard decision to make. 
So there's the score at the half, 1-0. The celebrating Coney Rams. They've got the lead in the half. We'll be back to talk about this first half and bring a second half action from Oakfield and Gardner coming up momentarily. You're watching High School Soccer on Munzing Media. Why waste valuable time and gasoline traveling around when you can enjoy one-stop shopping at Goggins IGA in Randolph. Goggins is locally owned by people you know and trust at the heart of our community. Goggins offers the convenience of one-stop shopping, in-store banking, a large selection of liquors and wines, and a full-service pharmacy. At Goggins IGA, you're in, you're out, you're home. Strategic Real Estate Services, serving all buyers and sellers. Two locations, 335 Water Street Gardner and 83 Kennedy Memorial Drive, Waterville. From residential to commercial, solutions and strategies that equal results for you. Visit strategicreservices.com or call 485-1105. At Gardner Apothecary, we offer all the medications and services of a modern pharmacy, but with the friendly, personalized service of an independent business. We are your source for all your pharmaceutical needs, offering conventional prescription filling, over-the-counter medications, vitamins, and more. We call our customers by name. We care about you, your health, and meeting all your pharmaceutical and medical supply needs at our locally owned pharmacy. We live here and we are committed to providing the very best care and customer service to our neighbors. Gardner Apothecary, the way pharmacy should be. Gardner Apothecary! Yay! Got it! <laughs> Got it! At our firm, we have the client and only the client in mind. Our mission is to get to know and understand your needs, wants, and long term goals. We want to help you develop, implement, and monitor a strategy that's designed to address your individual situation. We understand the challenges families face today. From managing debt to saving for college to retirement, these personal finance challenges can be overwhelming. Our commitment is to utilize all of our resources to help you pursue your goals. We believe in thinking out of the box, and we are not afraid to challenge conventional wisdom in our approach to financial services and preserving wealth. All of our energy, commitment, and efforts are focused on you, the client, and your satisfaction. When you choose a financial institution to entrust your hard-earned money to, bigger is not necessarily better. Will you be noticed? Will you be heard? At Gardner Federal Credit Union, our members aren't account numbers, they're our friends and neighbors. Each member has a vote, a voice. What matters to you matters to us. Lending decisions are based not solely on your credit score, but on who you truly are. We work diligently to end hunger. We volunteer in our local schools and throughout the community supporting neighborhood events. We are local people making local decisions, investing in our members and giving back to our communities. Gardner Federal Credit Union, where your money has a voice. Hello, buddy. Rob Munzing back here at halftime, taking the break from production to uh, bring you the halftime interview and we wanted to catch up with some of the other sports we haven't been able to cover here on Munsing Media. One of the tough things for us to cover of course is soccer so we've got uh, Coach Boudreaux here for the women and men's cross country team. Jen, how's it been going uh, so far this year for the cross country runners? Um, they've been having a pretty good year. Um, <laughs> oh, does it? Yeah, well, let's uh, flip the oh, so sorry. you can hear me. Now sorry. you can hear me, can't you? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> no, they've been having a pretty awesome year this year. Uh, I've really, my team really thrives on the smaller meets that we've been yeah. um, having. Uh, my boys won their first meet ever with under my coaching at, um, when we went to Congratulations. Waterville. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And my girls have had two very close uh, meets within points of winning. Um, so super close. I've been... Uh, pretty impressed with their growth since um, I've taken over and since they've uh, my little babies as freshmen have grown up to be sophomores and junior I mean juniors and seniors and it's pretty awesome. Uh, so in this tough COVID season here at least the uh, cross country teams are going to have a state meet isn't mm. that so that's amazing that uh, the NPA was able to put that together and to uh, to make that available for the cross country runners. Yeah so they say we're hoping fingers crossed that we can get there. Um, KVACs are scheduled to be October 31st at uh, Belfast. Um, they're going to decide on, Belfast will decide on Friday if we can, if they can still host the meet. Yeah, they're having some difficulty over there in Waldo County. Yeah, yes. and that very problem could happen here as well. So we're kind of like just 
we're just hoping we can get through and uh, get out of this and enjoy our th enjoy the rest of our season. Well, never has the uh, credo a date or time been more appropriate than it has been this fall for all the uh, the uh, skull athletes here that are going through their seasons, and uh, you know they seem very appreciative of the fact that they've been able to get out and get going. And uh, we know the mental health of these kids is of the utmost importance. So any type of physical activity is just so important. Absolutely, I agree. Our uh, motto every meet has been run like it's your last meet um, because we just can't guarantee that we'll have the next one and so we were lucky enough to get our four regularly scheduled meets in the season so uh, we already feel like we're winning and the fact that I mean and possibly having KVA season states coming up just makes my team even more excited and more appreciative of what they've been Sure. This year. Well, you have a dual role here too, Jen. Uh, not only uh, are you coming on here as the coach, but you're coming on uh, as a parent of an athlete. And the, it's been hard for the parents this fall too, hasn't it? Absolutely. Um, you're torn. You're like grateful that your kid can have a chance to play, um, but you're also feeling really sad and guilty because you know some of his other classmates as seniors aren't able to have yeah. a season either. So it's kind of one of those situations where you want to be happy and excited but you just you feel bad too you just my heart goes out to all my other senior um, moms and dads in the district that aren't getting the seasons that they wanted and and of course you you'd be one and you and your husband and many of the other parents are ones that hasn't uh, haven't missed a game since they were being driven to you know as toddlers almost to begin their careers and not able to go on the road and all of that and uh, you know a lot of people are picking up with the streaming like we've been doing it for a lot of years but uh, other schools are trying to stream their games and do the best they can and uh, certainly that's appreciated by uh, all the parents Absolutely. And we're pretty fortunate here to have you. Um, I know I've been going to, I've gone to a couple of the away games to stream for our, our soccer parents because they didn't have a streaming option. So that was kind of nice um, to be able to pull that off. Um, but I mean, my, my streaming is nowhere near your quality. So. <laughs> well, as I've told people that have called me to, how are you doing this? Well, you know, we've been at this 10 years. We've made a lot of the mistakes along the way. And, you know, today's a special production. We've brought in Rob Kennedy, an excellent play-by-play uh, -play announcer, uh, and Casey Johnson to team up. Uh, no two better soccer guys uh, that I can think of to do this Coney Garden, a game, two cameras today. And uh, so we're trying to dress it up here a little bit uh, for the kids and for the parents and all that. So uh, we thank all the f people for their fine comments and uh, certainly uh, good luck moving forward uh, with, with your program coach and uh, you know you were certainly uh, uh, emblematic of uh, what it uh, takes to be a, a tremendous mentor for kids and uh, uh, I'm proud to have been a former uh, proud now to be a former colleague but uh, a colleague at the time uh, Jen and I came in together the first uh, in 2012 I came back and Jen was coming from uh, uh, another job and so we kind of teamed up as first year teachers we were in the same uh, uh, cohorts and things of that sort. So it's been great to see your development uh, uh, as a teacher and as a coach, and we're lucky to have you here in MSAD 11. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. Loving this Tiger Town we have. Well, Tiger's got some work to do. They trail one nothing on the scoreboard. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. The clock's ticking down. In about two minutes, we'll be back in action here from Hopefield and Gardner after these messages. Coaches and athletes know that teamwork is the key to success. At the Gosline Insurance Group, our team is comprised of knowledgeable, enthusiastic, and dedicated agency personnel who are committed to keeping our clients informed and protected. Featuring nine agencies throughout the area, the Gosline Insurance Group is the largest locally owned independent agency group in Central Maine. As a trusted choice agent, we are dedicated to you and are committed to treating you as a person and not as a policy. This commitment means we will work for you and not the insurance company. So call us today and let our team put you on the path to success. Started in 2019 by the Coolis family in Pittston, Coolis Gravel Pit offers some of Kennebec County's highest quality gravel products. Located just south of the old Cedar Grove Road on the right off State Highway 27, Coolis Gravel Pit is committed to providing our customers with an outstanding product at a fair price. We offer a wide variety of products for all your needs. At Corliss Gravel Pit, our loader is always on site. Local deliveries on larger quantities are always available. And we offer discounts on large quantities as needed. Corliss Gravel Pit is family owned and operated since 2019. 
producing Kennebec County's highest quality gravel at a fair price. Back underway, as you see here in the second half. We just kicked off the Coney Rams with that 1-0 lead. Wearing the whites. Heading from left to right. Got us underway. Yeah, there's Momo. 16, right? 16 is such shit. I'll oh, agree. Uh, sorry, my bad. So, yeah. Appreciate all the comments trying to uh, get us straight. And one of the numbers is missing on the Coney roster. So that's what uh, we've been trying to haggle over. And, of course, as luck would have it, it was the... Players scored a very nice goal, the only goal of the game so far. I always like to identify them for their own sake. Out there, Andrew Boston. Thought it was a Coney throw, and it is. He doesn't want to take that, though. He's a striker, and he'll drop that off for Isaac Gammon. Isaac with a big throw. A very um, nice throw yeah. in, bouncing toward Campbell. and Right there on that goal line. Excellent work, though, by Tucker Bedro to work that out of danger. Yep. Yeah. Gave away the throw, but that's fine. He got it out of the area. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's tough to settle in that situation, and Tucker uh, has the poise to be able to do it. Back out to Abraham, into the area again. It bounces Ooh. clear and blasted over the crossbar. Piazza's, I believe, took that shot, number one. Mm -hmm. Now to turn on the volley and put it fairly close, just couldn't keep it to on frame. Yeah, those are the ones where you, you, you're stepping as a defender and you're worried about your footing and whatnot and striking it well. And uh, that forward uh, got, a good, got a good shot. Oh, nice up by Darogi. Now Baudry knocked that ahead. It's past him. Doing over there. Playing that ahead. Biazza's outside. That was intercepted. The Tigers try to work it back upfield. It's cut out once again. Campbell. Abraham on that far side. That was a good ball, and it's a corner for Coney. Nicely played. That ball to the wing was uh, was laid with nice pace, and he ran on. It's number 15 taking the kick. I believe that is Yusuf Abraham. Check out the end swinger on this one again. He put one on Patrick last time on the other end. We'll see what happens here. See if he plays it out further. Maybe to Jeffrey Boston. Nope. Back Skipped it toward fray. the goal. It was right in front, but no one there in white getting the other end of it. A hard skipper. And there's a shot from well out. Albadri took that one. Kind of slipped as he took it, and that's why it spun wide. Yeah, Patrick's doing a good job back there, though. He's communicating with his defenders and whatnot, and Gardner's played with pretty good layers back there to to, to stop the situation. It is Momo. Oh, no, Momo's wearing eight. <laughs> Foul called against the Tigers. A free kick to the Coney Rams. Isaac Gammon on the ball. He can deliver that into the air. He's got that range. The range to shoot if he wants to, although it's not going to be his option. Yeah. He's going to do exactly that, try to float it. Nice have a team in the other end, but it's played well by the Tigers. You're right. Yeah. Colby Vassell came out and, and shut that down right away. El Badri again. That bounces Bass Boston. Yeah. That's the tough ball. Out for a goal kick. Nicely played. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier, and it's exactly what's happened, too. Just the, those those balls that are getting into the area, trying to slow those down and have them sit for, for an attacking player. It's been next to impossible. Mm -hmm. Nice out by Tucker Boudreau. Found by Gammon. Gammon's had a great game in the midfield. Yeah, he's been tremendous. Abraham. Uh, that's a tough one for Darogi. Yeah, Darogi called for the foul. Yeah. Abraham will tee this up, probably for Gammon, though. He's taking these kicks, usually. Yeah, Tigers holding the 18 right now. Of course, the Rams can't get behind them without being offside until the ball's played. There it is. There it is. Nicely played. Headed away again. Vassal with a big step. Oh, nicely played by 16. Gardner had it taken away by Albadri. But right into the middle, no one home, though, except oh. for the Tigers' Casey Paul. And he had more time than he knew. Yeah, people have to talk a little bit. Casey's got all that space. He should be able to turn, especially in this situation where you need to settle it in. Down toward Boston. Campbell took it down, played outside. And this will roll. Stay in. Knocked out for a Coney throw. 
Nice skill. Good hustle over there by the Rams wing. Isaac Gamma will take the throw again. This is a good situation where, where Isaac can play that ball in in the air. Just another corner kick. Rising high, Staples to head it away. Tigers may be able to counter here, although the Rams do have four back, and Gardner couldn't keep it in. Gammon again. Tucker Boudreau with the head. Rams have had the possession here in the second half. It falls to Campbell. Oh. Put in toward the goal. Not cleared away, though. Campbell's still battling for it. May come up with this yet. A foul called. And the Tigers will happily take this free kick. A little push off by Campbell. Nothing too bad. Just trying to free up some space, but the referee looking right at the play is going to make that call. Yeah, this is not basketball. No hand checks allowed. Nicely played. So Maad Al-Salim Al Al is number 10. He got the goal. Ah. Who's number eight for them then? Not sure. <laughs> Potentially Momo. I would guess that's Momo Ali. Uh, oh, Ali that's right. I'm guessing they that's who that say is. That's Momo. Okay. We'll see. So that's what we know now. Nicely played by Casey Paul. Good, good space. So uh, unlucky. Al-Salim has the goal, and it was a nice one, too, that finish. He just kind of was patient and waited for it. Mm -hmm. he's, he's been a threat in that left wing, on that left side. It's a Gardner throw. That's what the holdup is, and the Tigers want a sub, too, so it might be delayed another second longer. Mm -hmm. Sam Arsenal. Andrew Boston getting a warning from the referee. Mm. He might have been right, though. I was going to say, he had a better look at it, I think, than the <laughs> official did. And sometimes the players do know. Yeah, and no, a tough, tough kinda, situation with a two-man system. It is. Yeah. And he got the call this time. Let's go back Coney's way. The soccer gods play it the correct way. Here's a chance for Derogi. Derogi fires. It's deflected. Off Caleb Gardner's head. Gaiman wanted to get it back in quickly. Had to slow down. Oh, that's a tough ball to play. Yeah, heavy touch to Caleb Gardner, but Gardner's pass intercepted. He admired the midfield right now. Will Campbell ahead has Andrew Boston. The pass was deflected in the way through and never got to him. Good out by Tucker Boudreau. And Boudreau played that well after the deflection. Mm. Paul, a decent ball ahead. It looked like it first, but it skipped as it's been doing. We've mentioned that numerous times. Yeah, most of these guys have to play some short. Yeah, see, that's a tough one. Yeah, Durogi call him. for the foul, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Coach didn't like it, but that was the right call. He pulled him back, pulled right off the hip. It's a season foul, actually. It's yeah, trying nice to get it. It was it was subtle. Yep. And the referee again. They've, they've, the official on this side, especially when he's made calls, has had a good look at it. Yep. Only time he missed one, I think that throw that uh, Boston was complaining about rightly. I think uh, that was the one time he was far off the play. Mm-hmm. Also, Liam. Good out by Tucker Boudreau. Yeah, yeah I'll drill that away. Yeah, it was a hard one. Yeah, you get this narrow width. You can mix it up a little bit. Oh, big hit. He has a shot just wide. Yeah. A little more wide than I thought originally, but mm -hmm. got out there. A couple of subs for the Coney Rams. Yeah, in this in this uh, in this weather, I mean, it, you should really pull the trigger in the, in this situation. Uh, guys are going to have the ability to. Uh, to score when they normally don't score. Just little breaks. Nice let by Vassal. Holding it too long, though, and that allowed uh, Momo Alibrahim to catch up. Momo usually wears six. He's out there on eight today. It's not unusual to see roster numbers shift. Nah. Not in the MPA. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it could we like be, it better when they don't, but yeah, a, it happens. Right. Could be a, a lost jersey or whatnot. Well, that's exactly it. it. You know, yeah. Something happens and players have to switch it up. Or I know Coach has one blood jersey for uh, for that purpose. And, uh, you know, maybe if a kid forgets one, too. So Abraham, yeah. back toward Momo, cut out nicely by Gardner. Nice step by Gardner. Try to play it all the way ahead. 
Strong defense once again by Justin Perry. Campbell. Couldn't get through Tucker Boudreau. Yeah. DeRogi, he's got a man on him, and Abraham. Who forced him back. Decent thought by DeRogi. He just had the leg to get it out there and made it easy for Perry. You blast it all the way downfield. Yeah, and they, they had everybody locked down in the middle, so it was a harder look. So Caleb's got to come in and offer a little uh, for DeRogi in that situation. Got his uh, ball intercepted again. Not a lot to feet. El Badri put that ahead. Yeah, Coney's not making it easy for the Rams at all to get downfield. Maybe here, but headed down once again. Yeah. It's got to be working harder for the ball. And that's what you find with these guys is uh, the ones that can trap down to their feet are, are more successful. Some of these guys are playing long balls, and it just doesn't work. Cameron Dewins, Ojed Albadri, and Justin Perry, the back three, have been really foiling the Gardner Tigers. DeRogi will catch up to this. Has a little space, a man in Abraham bearing down. Yeah, this formation is a hard one for for the Tigers to play against because they're outmanned in the in up top with a basic three. Um, if they're playing a four four two, and then that midfield, um, there's three in the central midfield, and uh, for the Tigers, there's just two, which is you know Casey Paul and and um, Braden DeRogi. Abraham. All right into the middle of the field, no one there in white. Boudreau made it easy. Nicely played. Uh, Dewan steps out to kick that ahead. Here's Al Salim. And it's a throw in for the Tigers this time. 12 minutes gone here in the second half. Still 1 0. I'm at Al Salim's goal in the 35th minute, the only one. The Tigers will make a switch. Boudreau. And Jackson Boudreau in. Caleb Gardner will take his spot in the bench. A big change because Caleb Caleb sit back. He he likes his skill set and uh, and plays well on a on a dry day where Jackson's going to be that mutter as we kind of talked about earlier. He works hard um, and it's going to capitalize on the situation. I think that's what coach is looking for too. It's a Coney throw, trying to work it quickly. It bounced through uh, Alcatea's hands. Hmm. He wanted to get that back in quickly and he'll defer this time to Gamble who's taking most of the throws. If you can't catch the opponent by surprise, I think Alcatea did the right thing to defer to Gammon. Absolutely. Well, we got it in quickly. That could have been trouble. Could be trouble here as the Rams settle in the area, but the shot right at the keeper. Nicely played by Patrick Manser. He had position. the right position, indeed. Absolutely. Nicely settled by Bushi. Bushi did well. Maybe it's on here. The pass too far ahead, and that calls Medora into action. He'll come out and take that, and the on-rushing Cam will sell. So I think the, the the success for Gardner will be is that one of the strikers dropping down to help the midfield a little bit, uh, just like Bushi just did. Uh, the only issue I see there is after that play was very, you know, it was north-south up the field, and that's not going to work. Not on a day like today. Now, condition's with, not ideal, to say the least. I settled by the sophomore Staples. And the sophomore-laden team. There's DeRogi. He's a junior. One of the elder statesmen, the way this <laughs> Tigers team shapes up. It bodes well for the future here, the yeah. boys in orange and black. Braden's played since he was a freshman. He's one of those kids that just uh, his skill set and his, and his, uh, his IQ has always been high. Same way on the basketball court. Dariel Cateo on that far side. Played back to Abraham. Ooh. And Alcatea say it? No, he can't. Yeah. Can't save that, and it's a goal kick for the Tigers. Good idea. Tough one on this field. Coney starting to really have the territorial advantage here in the second half. It was more even in the first half. The goal late in the first seems like it changed things as far as momentum and possession and just the shape of the game. Yeah, I think they stuck to the game plan. Uh, they played defeat quite a bit. You know, they're always looking for that striker who drops down into the middle um, and he, he'll settle it, which is uh, is the Campbell kid who uh, who's who's been that steady influence up top. Foul by Varney. A free kick to the Tigers. They'll hurry. Good good decision. Get Dorogi up there to get the chance offensively. And sometimes you want to hustle, but not this time. They go right to Dorogi. Two Rams convey. Here's the long service into the area. <laughs> 
And House of Liam let that go out of play. It was living dangerously a bit, but then played it well with his body to shield off the closest Gardner player. Colby Vassell's dad uh, jinxed him on that one earlier, saying his uh, offensive uh, prowess isn't as good as, as he thought. And that shot went way wide. Not quite for a throw in, but pretty wide. Cameron Dewan taking his time, the sophomore surveying things. There's numerous changes, so sitting on that far side for the, yep. the Rams. Nicely played by Derogi. Gabe Biazza's back in, for example, the junior, number one. Andrew Boston's still out there, number two. It goes by him, but his Rams have the throw. And Boston himself, the man to take it. Nope, oh. he'll drop it. His gammon again. Quick re-entry re would have been a good one there, because number one was wide open. It's almost like it's a union job as far as the throw-in goes. That's mm -hmm. Parker gets Isaac Gammons, excuse me, and he takes it every single time. <laughs> and it does slow the game down. No, if you're the Rams, you got the one nil lead. Yep, definitely. Time not on your side, and you're quickly gaining territory here. Gammon will get this into the area and does. Maybe a chance now. Bounced off Boston. Another throw. Another throw. Yeah, I'd like to see Isaac get a hold of one and... Uh, Use this as a, almost like a corner kick take. He doesn't have a particularly long run up. You wonder if he if he did how, how far he can right. check that. Pretty good in the short run. Yep, totally. Oh, just yeah. bounced high as Biazzas took it down. It's a tough play for Gabe Biazzas, and he almost put that on goal. It was just high. Let's see if Tigers can string some passes together through the midfield. Nicely played by Patrick Manser to yeah, playing it right to Tucker, right out the back. Mm -hmm. Allen Baugh cut out again. There's Bro there's Derogi with great it. Great play by Perry. Derogi took it off his foot, played through. There Lascelles there, can he score? Right on the line and kept oh. out by Madour. He oh, went play. down to make the save. It's the Tigers' best chance so far. Cam Lascelles, but Madour equal to it. Nice bid. I think Cam really was just looking to go five hole on that and uh, had a chance to go far post, but uh, I think he made the good decision. It was with his left foot as well, and I'm not sure. Yeah. You see him more often than I do. Is that yeah. his uh, dominant or his weaker foot? Um, I think he's pretty pretty balanced with the two. Um, he did a good job to get that on goal with the left. If it was weaker foot especially, I'm even more impressed. Cam Cam's speed is his asset. Uh, skill, skill wise, he's getting there. He's he, again another sophomore on that field, uh, and you see the pace he can play at. Um, he's getting better and better. Tigers intercept the game and throw, and here they come. A chance to more. counter. Paul nicely played. Jackson oh. Boudreau went by him. Sometimes you have too much time and space. Yeah, you want to keep that ball in front of you. That was a hard one. He knows too. Was he just kind of shook his head. Mm -hmm. He walked away. But too much time to think, I think, is the, the situation. Yeah. I've seen wide receivers here wide open in the end zone who have tons of time and drop the ball because you don't want to think. No, you don't. Just do. El Badri ahead. Excellent work in the air by Boudreaux. Sam laid back. That's nicely done. Boudreaux again has to hurry, though. He's got Biazza sparing down on him. He avoided the Co Coney Jr. Gammon ahead toward Biazza. Freshman. Cleared out. By Allen by the freshman. Oh, a very good, good young player in this Tigers team. Boston tried to stab it on the sideline. Couldn't keep it in. Now subs both ways. Dariel Katea back in for Coney. Taylor Tweedy will check back in now for the Gardner Tigers. And Bryce Bushy. Yeah, Bryce Bushy is the other one coming back in. Right off Biazza's how Boston rather's head. That's a hard ball. That hard that's a hard situation for the defender. You just want to get a clearance and it it's like a ping pong ping pong ball sometimes. And rolls into the area. Ooh. Abraham yeah. puts that behind the post, behind the crossbar and a goal kick. He had to do that as the ball was kind of spinning away from him. Yeah, that's a that's a chance that, that goes by the wayside. You want to square your shoulders to that cross, and it's hard. He's playing it short to boot it downfield again. There's Dewan over there to bounce that ahead. Casey Paul for Gardner. His pass intercepted. Abraham outside. They'll have to play it back toward him. Now ahead. Something on for the Rams here. 
Uh, well played by Tucker Boudreaux. Tucker Boudreaux has been very, very good as far as the Tigers' defense has been concerned today. A nice move by Boudreaux. Still with it. Had to get rid of it and did, but nice work by doing too. And I'm sure Bedore, the keeper, must have communicated to call him off and let that roll through. Mm. So that was the right play to let the keeper have that. Yeah. Trouble if the defender touches that with a Tiger right there. No, it's good communication skills out back. You can tell they've been playing together for a while. This one lands at a precarious spot. Gardner there to deal with it. Colby Vassell. Nicely played by Jackson Boudreau. To bounce down to Jake Varney. Slowed it down a bit too much. There's Varney right back there again, right on that sideline. Really good battle between Var Varney and Boudreau. That's that work rate that coach was looking for from Jackson. Chested down by Perry. Gardner in control by Spushi. Nice ball by uh, Derogi. Boudreau with a chance here as he slipped his marker. And earns the Tigers a throw or a corner. Which is it? I, I think it's a throw, and we'll find out after the break because it's halfway through this second half and time for our sanitation and hydration break here at Hoke Field. So just the one goal in it, Ahmed Al-Salim, Al -Salim, scoring in the 35th minutes. The only goal so far, Coney up 1-0 on Gardner on Munzing Media. At Randolph Hardware, our game plan is simple. We offer way more than just hardware. But it all starts with a promise. We have what you need and always with a smile. We have a huge selection of paint, plumbing, electrical, and gardening supplies to help you complete simple projects to major home renovations. We also offer a rental center, factory authorized power equipment repair, and the best tool selection around. So stop in today and let the Randolph Hardware team help make your project a winner. Hi, my name is Shana Epperson and I'm with Atlantic Youth Sports, Inc. And we operate out of Gardner, Maine. We strive to bring young athletes to the game of basketball, volleyball, softball, and lacrosse. We also bring our principal cores, three of them, of teamwork, we bring respect, and we bring confidence. Hi, I'm Lizzie Gruber. I've been with Shana for six years. AYS has brought me to be a physically and mentally stronger person on and off the court. I've also met some of my lifelong friends through this amazing program. You can become part of our family by visiting us online at www.aysinc.org or you can email us at aysincinfo at gmail.com. The culture in PNG is very different. It's very special. Um, everyone is very collaborative. Everyone is very honest and they um, want to help you succeed. I work with a good group of people. Um, a lot of experienced people that have been here for many years. Um, some people that I work with have been here for 30 plus years. You have the tools to learn, the necessity to drive you forward, which uh, is great. I'm getting my needs met career-wise, so I'm getting the leadership experience, I'm getting the coaching that I need to move, move on and move up. The greatest aspects of benefits of we get here, you know, we get health insurance, life insurance, um, disability insurance, and it's all oh, keys and that's, that's worth something to me, I mean, along with the pay, I know I'm going to have a paycheck at, at the end of the week. Maybe we have a situation here where we can name the Caps as player of the game. Gardner goal, and we do. And we have Braden Derogi. Braden Derogi bended that around. Yeah. And now he jumps on top of the leaderboard for the Caps' pizza. Gardner player of the game. Derogi just bent that around to look dangerous from the get-go. Yeah, we talked about that earlier, uh, about having uh, defenders on the posts back in the day. Uh, now that with the 5v5, um, Braden Derogi took advantage. Put it in the, the far uh, back net. Well, well he played. got the Tigers' goal on the Caps' Pizza Player of the Game, if he is so named. <laughs> Gets a free 10-inch one-topping pizza from Caps' Pizza. We'll see it again. Let's see if we don't have a touch on this as it bounced around. As now nah, just went in off the post. There was a Tigers player there, but it uh, bounced off the post and in. So we saw a couple of dangerous corners in this contest, but that one yep. actually tying the game. Tarogi in the 21st minutes. And we're at 1-1. One, one. 
Yep. Let's it's see level how, here in Gardner. Let's see how both of these teams handle this change. Well, game on. No doubt. Braden. Abraham trying to take that away from Jarogi. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah, a little push off there. That's what Jarogi, they're watching Jarogi with the hands. It's the second time he's been called for that. Yeah. Definitely. And kind of watch that uh, contact. He's Again, we mentioned he's subtle, just not subtle enough because both times he's been right by the referee. I think he's a little frustration piece. Uh, Yusuf uh, Abraham uh, is, uh, has, has put in a great effort as a freshman on that oh, field, yeah. that midfield. Now, you watch the Abraham play, and you would never know he's a freshman. Absolutely. Three changes now. Oh, two changes now for Coney. 20 off. Momo Ali Ibrahim is back in. He's number oh. eight. And 17's back on, too. Will Campbell had a breather. He's back out there. I'm throwing it his way. Al Ibrahim is there. Back out toward Al Salim. Al Salim with it, trying to shake his defender. Taylor Tweedy's right there all over him. Yeah. And learned the throw. Good work by Tweedy. All right, take that back. I thought it was going uh, Gardner's way, but it's not. It's the Tigers player signaling in their direction, not the referee. Yeah. That changes things immensely in that, that situation, but the Tigers got it anyway. Yeah, Mr. Clark let him play a little bit on that wing, too, so a little physicality. Not a bad thing, just as long as it doesn't get out of hand. Well played. Jackson Boudreau. A good physical battle with Jake Varney. Varney's got him shielded. He mm -hmm. had to play it out. Yep. Tigers, with their tails up here, they've got some excitement after the Drogi goal, and he'll... Get us back underway. Yeah, and that's where Jackson's come in uh, for Caleb Gardner and, and put in a big effort, um, doing a great job physically up and down the field. Darogi. Two Rams there with him. Darogi taking both on, gets the throw. Boston knocked it out of bounds. Boston heads that high. Will it stay in is the question? No. Corner kick. The Gardner Tigers, Darogi just scored from that same spot last time. We'll see what we can get out of this. Uh, is break? Oh, no, they call it a throw in or a goal kick? I'm not sure what the call is. Was, was it off Jackson? Did yeah, he kick the ball? I'm saying it is. I didn't mm -hmm. think it was. I'm wondering if Jackson put. The referee on the far side of the field is the one who made the call, and now they're going to talk about this. Is I think that was last touched, it looked to me, by the Coney Rams. Okay. I thought it was a corner, too. Darogi down there. And to mention these players know each other pretty well. You know, it's not like a game in a real way. They just exchanged a yeah. quick pat in the shoulder. Former teammates. Yeah. Basketball teammates as well. The referee's deciding exactly which way this is going to go, as you see. Yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to call the eye in the sky, Munzing. No. It is no. the corner like we thought. After yeah. all that, it's Darogi on the corner. I mean, and I think it was hard to see to recover. We can see it sometimes better being at this high perch and this near side of the field. Far side we can't, but the near side, we've got a good look. Darogi this That's time curls serve. it around. Nice service. And it down in. into the area. It's on the line. Oh. And it doesn't go. Good bid by Tweedy. Crash in the net. Oh, Josh. It was Jacobson. a long hit by Jacobson. It's wide. Boy, those corners have turned very dangerous for the Gardner Tigers. They've scored on one and came close a second time. Yeah, on this uh, narrow field, you want to play with some depth and then crash the net a little bit on the corner kicks. The Coney Rams really were the aggressors and had the territorial and possession advantage for about, well, 30 straight minutes in this game, really. Yeah, yeah totally. And the Tigers on that uh, corner kick have tied it up, and you've seen how much they've ener been energized by it. Yeah, some of the hands that you were talking earlier about on, on Braden earned him that call, too, which was, that was kind of ticky-tack, but uh, I think he's done a good job in that midfield position. Well, Abraham nice played in. Well, offsides. Abraham was there, but he was offside. And he turned to look, too. I think he had an inkling that he mm -hmm. was out of position. There's that midfielder filling the gap, too. He's done a good job. So we have substitutions again? Terry no. Alcatea wants to yeah. come in, but it's an offside, so not yet. Alcatea's yeah. over ready to go, and a couple Tigers as well. I see Sam Arsenal over there. Nicely played. Casey Paul brought that down for Gardner. Paul still for the Tigers. Good bar over the far side. They've got Boudreaux arriving. He's on the right wing. But Dewan puts out the fire. Nice play thing. that toward Will Campbell and his opposite number, Allenbaugh, the freshman, boots that into the bleachers. 
No call. It's getting chippy. It is. Allen Ball helping us. Number made Campbell back to his feet, though, after they both collided. And so we continue to play. Nicely played. Headed ahead. Casey Paul on the run. It bounces too far for him. Isaac Gammon now. A turn pass to El Ibrahim. Momo El Ibrahim lets that ride. El Badri. Good nice look. one, too. El Badri going far side. That's a tough ball for Allen Ball. Also Liam the shot. And Saved down low by Manser. Al Salim has one for the Rams and a bid for a second. Patrick Manser in perfect position. He's done well. He has. Will Campbell. By himself for now, too many Tigers, and it's knocked out of play. Not as fluid as he was in the first half. He, he looks like he's hurting a little bit. Darogi came from his midfield position to cover and knock that out. New substitutions. 20 in. Alcatea back in. That's for Colby uh, Coney. And a Tiger sub was made as well, but it was not far side. I didn't see exactly which one just came in, but they made one sub too. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Sam uh, Arsenal in. The Arsenal came striker. back in. Yeah. Number six. It's a Rams throw. Also Liam. Laid that back in. Uh, communication. It's a tough ball. A lot of play, and the Rams will let it ride. They'll take the throw. Khalil Ibrahim. Campbell. Nice Good work by Jacobson. Jacobson. Yeah, that was a great step. Cameron Dewins played a fine game defensively. He'll win the throw for the Rams, it appears. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see some of these defenders, especially the sophomore roles for, for the Tigers and, and the young kids for uh, for Coney, the anticipation. In, in this situation, you're always second-guessing yourself with the slick field, and these kids are, are, are really stepping up. Vassal plays it downfield for Gardner. Right back upfield again. Also, Liam last to touch it, perhaps. No, it went off the Gardner Tigers. It's a throw for the Rams. Well, maybe. Wasn't clearly communicated to Isaac Gammon who wanted to take the throw. He does so now. No doubt or here. It's another throw in for the Rams. The officials hate that when the calls not uh, rather the coaches hate that when the calls aren't clear from the officials. Right. That bounced stop high in a shot. Just wide. Rolling wider. Well, Ibrahim with the opportunity was a spinning ball and a hard one to put on target. Hmm. See if Gardner has any chance to break here. Every, every time the ball collapses to that far side, the whole Coney team collapses that way. So it'll be interesting. Hmm. Foul by Casey Paul. Rams trying to get it back in quickly. Vassal was aware and played it out. Here's some space now for Cam LaSalle if he can catch up to it. It bounces favorably for him, but neither one is the case. Yeah, that was up by Josh Jacobson. Great ball up top. Had space. Yep. Not able to keep that in the field of play. If you can target your striker, you're, you're going to uh, have some great chances. I mean, that's the big thing is you cannot play through balls in this situation. Matt Al Salim in the 35th minute. Open the scoring for the Rams. Braden DeRogi on a corner in the 21st minute of the second half. Has leveled things 1 1. Arsenals couldn't go forward. Hmm. Blew the play dead. The Rams, uh, rather, the Tigers may have wanted an advantage there. Must have been yeah. some contact. I don't know. I'm not sure on that one. Stop Jacobson, and now Bedreau wheels it ahead. Gardner played that back. It's in the middle of the field. The only one there is Yusuf Abraham. That's nice ball. ball ahead to Al Salim. Al Salim works toward the goal line. Shakes his marker. And Oof. shot just wrong side of the post into the side netting. Good bid. 
Good work by Bedro to stick with him, though, and make that a difficult shot. Yeah, both of them actually, you know, one's jockeying for position to shoot, and the other one's jockeying position uh, to defend, and they, it was a good, well-contested ball. There you go. Nice step by Gammon. Gammon tips that over to Cameron Dewan. Campbell now. Campbell trying to touch that outside, intercepted. Gammon played a little too lightly that time. Dewan yep. over to battle four, but it's Sam Arsenal now. Tweedy with a nice ball into the middle. Here come the Rams again as they'll try to work that left flank. That's where El Salim is lurking, but he runs out of space. They're constantly going to that well, aren't they? That's been the spot for them. Yeah. The weather's turned a little bit nicer now. That'll help the field condition at all, but the mist has uh, stopped. and Actually, the sky's even brightening. It, it looks that. Too little too late, unfortunately, <laughs> weather-wise, but uh, at least it's not playing in a monsoon. It was the case earlier this week for some teams. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, was that Monday? Two, Monday. And, well, last Friday was the worst. Uh, I think it was only one game in the area, most canceled, but uh, Madison and Halldale girls played, and it was wet. Oh, I bet. Caleb Gardner. The game right here on Munsing Media as well. Gardner in a good battle with Alcate, who made a little too much contact. That's a free kick for the Tigers in a dangerous spot. Let's see how they approach this one. Tigers wondering if it was a penalty kick, but it was outside the box. Here, coach call Casey Paul. Let's see. Casey's probably got the deadliest of the foot. Um, He's number nine. They're moving him back, though, right to where Tucker Boudreaux, 15, stands. And the referees, well, says, eh, we'll bring it up. <laughs> they may want to walk off 10 as well. You see what Casey Paul does here. The Tigers scoring on one set piece in the corner. We'll see what they do now. Yeah, he's looking for 10. He's going to have players arriving on that far side. This is taking some time. Yeah, it is. Let's we'll see what Casey brings with his right foot. Tigers won't mind, though, if they're able to get their noses in front with this goal. See if he plays it off of 19, just off of 19's head. Nope. Low and hard. Low and hard, well right played. on goal. Very well played by Manser as he had... Tigers approaching. Lasell, I think, was the closest one there, and he would have gobbled up any rebound. Yeah. That was Medor, correct? Yeah, Medor. I mean, did I say Mansur? Medor. Yeah. Yeah. Gardner's keeper didn't make that <laughs> save, but Medor did. Yes. It's all right. They've actually both played very, very well. They have. Yeah. No, it's been a good game. Now, Badri. Lee Ibrahim. Back to Albadri. Oh, well played. And played even better, although are they calling a foul here? No, nope, it's Arrow, but it's going to be against the uh, Coney Ramps. Will Campbell, a wow. judge guilty. A little contact there. I didn't see yeah. much. A little bit ticky-tack. I think he's, he's, playing, uh, he's playing to get around that corner, and I think he did a good job. That was a tough call. Six minutes even remaining in the second half. The only goal of the second half, Braden Derogi for Gardner. He cooling out and canceling out. I'm at Al Salim goal in the first half for... The Coney Rams. Oh, That's up boy. over the top. Might be trouble here. Same if Arsenal. Arsenal can settle it. That spins into the area. Arsenal was able to put in the field of play. Doing did just enough. Arsenal again. Oh, good Rolled up. through, and Alcatea, the lucky recipient, will get rid of that. It wasn't supposed to come all the way through to him, but it did. Nice step by Josh Jacobson. And Jacobson did that well, but this will skip off the wet turf and go out for a goal kick. Yeah, that's a tough one. He got a little too eager. Yeah, that, and he was switching to his right foot. It, it's a hard one. That's a that's a tough one to play. Sam Arlson all did a good job. He's replaced, though. And Taylor Tweedy back in with 5.05 remaining. May see overtime here in Gardner. Nicely played by Caleb Gardner to head down. Alcatea, great nice. move on that sideline. Alcatea with the cut the V. Haven't seen that in a while. Very talented. Labraham knocked that down. And Ooh. The tent kind of blocked my view. We have a foul here? We do. It's a free kick for the Rams yeah, this time. A little, little obstruction, I guess. But that was, again, 
in, in this wet field, uh, you got to give the defender a little break on that one. Dangerous spot for the Rams here, and Yusuf Abraham is stepping up just inside that sideline of this narrow field. Yeah. Coney pushing people up. Uh, They'll have options yeah. just outside of the area as Abraham steps up, and here we go. That's a good ball. And headed high. And booted away. Well played by the Tigers. Yeah, Vassal with a big clear needed. It wasn't easy either. As you mentioned, the Abraham's delivery was a good one. Yeah, it really was. And uh, Vassal to play that out one time was very important. Little clears a little pressure. This looks like it'll roll all the way at, into yeah. dead ball territory and a goal kick for the Rams. Waiting mm -hmm. to see, though. And still kind of throws me a bit in the narrow field. See, the keeper will run almost all the way to the sideline. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's very deceiving because it looks like it's, 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 it's real narrow on that side. But Go from Halldale to here especially. Oh. The two things at Halldale, you've got that. We're more at uh, field level at Halldale, so you have the crown first of all. Right. And then at that very wide field. Yeah, and then it is a wide field. It's wide as I've, I've seen in a high school field. And this is a tough one for, you know, for Coach Wallace. And actually the Coney coach too because there's some speed on both teams. And uh, this is restrictive, this field is. Well, Abraham tried to play that to the far side. It's a Gardner throw in, Allenbaugh ready. And he got us back underway quickly. Nicely played. Good poise well, there. Abraham Oop. trying to find Darrell Catea on the way through, and it was blocked. Good speed to come up and knock that ahead. Now the Rams, some room on this near side. Cam sell. Nice Tigers play. closed down well, and yeah, Justin Ooh. Perry did very well. There's a shot, though. Wow. Caleb really kind of making something out of nothing with Caleb Gardner, and he put that and made Brandon nice. Madour work. Really good decision by Caleb Gardner to play that in. I think the goalie uh, misjudged that. Here come the Rams. Boy. Abraham stops, shoots. It's a bouncer and a tough one. The rebound's there. Oh, the wow. Heavy first touch. Well, Abraham had a hard time. Bringing that down. It wasn't easy. And that was Mansers to take once that happened. Now Katea did nicely to keep that in play. Yeah, the, these guys are uh, playing at a, at a nice skill level. Neither team wants overtime, you can tell. Just two minutes left in regulation time. Dariel Katea. Good step by Casey Paul. Yeah, sure was. And he'll play that out for the throw. So almost kept that in. That would have caught Jake Varney by surprise. Yeah. Oh. Handball. Mm. Oh. Still not happy about her, and he ought to watch himself. Yeah, he, you don't want a grandstand. It's the official. demonstrative part the officials don't like, but the official just kind of ignores him and lets it go. Yeah. And that's a season of professional. Like yeah, don't want to mar the game with a card if you can help it. Right. They give him a little bit of a little bit of leeway, but not much. Yeah. Lasell was wise after he made his point to back off. Here's the Tigers again. Casey Paul with a good. Here's Gardner. Good chance, yeah. On the left flank, working ahead. Good shot in toward goal. It's free and cleared out. Wow. Boy, Cameron doing alert came to play that as Madour stopped it but couldn't hold it. Right. And then and, and to be honest with you, that that was a great chance for Cameron Lasell. Oh, Tarogi with the ball. Derogi is the Tigers' goal scorer. Put in front, and oh, almost an opportunity again. Good step to get that. I think Gammon got the foot in that. Yep. Tigers looking to win it to the death. Re-entry by Jacobson. Nope. Taking away. Now the Rams might counter. We'll see. Mm. Abraham. Good poise by Abraham. Abraham carries himself. He's got Campbell ahead. Abraham worked outside in the give and go. That was with Al Salim. And played out into touch by Allenbaugh. 26 seconds left. Now it's the Rams who want the late winner. Doing. Return to Gammon. Tigers won't let the Rams into the area. 14 seconds to go. It looks like we're going to have overtime unless we yeah. have one last second miracle conjured up. And that's booted downfield by Colby Vassal. He can be assured we'll hear the siren. And we do. Overtime coming up here in Gardner. Ahmed Al Salim's goal in the first half, 35 minutes, was the opening goal, but Braden Derogi tied things up in the 21st minute. 
On a great corner kick. Levels things up 1-1 one, one on the uh, corner, and that's where we stand right now. Let's step aside for a break and come back for the extra, se extra session. Here at Hoke Field momentarily, you're watching Garter Tigers Soccer on Munsing Media. When I'm on the road speaking, I'm able to have sidebar conversations with everybody that wants to come talk to me. And I hear about their family and loved ones that are going through maybe cancer, maybe a critical illness, maybe something being disabled from a job and not having the coverage that they need because their health care just didn't cover it. I ask that you would allow one of our experienced representatives to come into your business so that we are able to educate you on the value of these very, very important products. JMH Associates is a boutique financial and management consulting firm that can provide customized solutions for your business or personal affairs. We can provide management expertise to your small business, personal financial guidance, and organizational structure for your personal and business needs. This will allow for better communication and execution with your other financial partners. We help establish businesses, we'll help you start a new business, and we can provide IT support for your business needs. We are JMH Associates. We're proud to be associated with MunzingMediaSports.com. The Hutchinson Family Sports Foundation is proud to support Munzing Media's production of live streaming high school sports. We recognize the hard work and dedication of Maine's high school student athletes, and we applaud Munzing Media's pioneering live streaming efforts. The Hutchinson Family Sports Foundation. Junior Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. Gardner Tigers got the equalizer here in the second half, and both teams not satisfied after 80 minutes. They want to play some more. Two five-minute overtimes, unless someone scores, it is golden goal, and we take a look at Braden Derogi, who does have the Gardner Tigers goal. Off a corner kick, the junior equalized in the 21st minutes. The rarity of that. He uh, he bent that in nicely, uh, and really, question, you know, the goalie questioned himself and followed it back in, and... Uh, that's a great shot by Braden. I was remarking earlier in the contest when the Rams did something similar that I hadn't seen someone score off a corner. As the Rams came close in the first half, and then Darogi does it in the second. That cancels out the Ahmed Al Salim strike. In the 35th minute, five minutes from halftime in the first half. Yeah. And that I'm, came off a set piece as well. Yeah, and I'm 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 thinking that, you know, I'm paying attention to the Gardner scores, doing as many games as I have. Uh, uh, tough play. Had a set spun play. and roll. They wanted to kick I that down the right side. I think Braden has scored another one. I think he scored it against Levitt this year um, on a corner kick also. Game one got us back into play. Excellent work by Allen Ball, though, the impressive freshman. Cut out over on that far side by Doriel Catea. Now it's Albadri. Now Katea watches that roll. It was last touched by Caleb Gardner, and it was. Mm -hmm. Played back in quickly to Al Ibrahim. Momo Al Ibrahim, number eight. Now the goal scorer over on the near side. That's Samet Al Asalim, oh, yes. Asalim rather. Ooh, that was a great chance for uh, Will Campbell. Will yeah. Campbell, yeah. Almost won back the other way, but it was picked off well. Nice good out. defensive plays in the rapid succession. Taylor Tweedy. Some open space. Casey Paul on a fight over there with Alcatea. Rams head that forward. Trying to find Campbell there, and that's Tucker Boudreau. He's nice. on the ball for Gardner. Nicely played by Tucker. Tucker still carrying it. This could be something here for the Tigers. Ooh. Foul called. Look at Sajet Albadri on that. Tucker Boudreau on the ball. Boudreau was fouled. 
He also made sure the referee saw that contact, didn't he? Yeah. This uh, this is the one that I would put on net. Fog starting to set in here a little yeah. bit, as you see. Line drive into the area, knocked down. Hard one to control. To Rogie, who has the Tigers' goal. Bounces that back in the area. The Rams clear it away. There's a shot. Salambaugh just wanted to let that fly and put that near the goal, but it was a tough one, and it went wide. Early on, that would get the nerves out. This one was, uh, he, he gave it a bid. He did. Bounces to the midfield stripe. Well, Ibrahim is there. Well played. Now on the near side, the Rams, they've got something cooking. Bounces in toward the area. Al Salim's over there. Going to get by Allenbaugh. Grayson did just enough. He freed up Boudreaux to clear that ball. Dylan back into the middle. Gammon with it. Now play the give and go. Trying to get that back to Al Ibrahim. Nicely played. Taylor Tweedy just showed Gammon too much. Hey, Ibrahim to Al Badri. Nice one, too. Alcatea. It's a throw in for the Rams. Dari Alcatea. Great we'll defensive take. play by Josh Jacobson on that. And a Rams sub coming in. Number one, I think. Yeah, Gabe Biazis. It is number one. Kind of bad luck for oh, James Gabe. He's trouble nice now. Ball. It was a very nice ball, and it could be, and it is a corner. I thought for a moment, though, that uh, sub was unintentionally by Coach James Gay old time because they wanted to get that ball back in quickly. Yeah, they did. You never know when you send somewhere to that uh, midfield stripe what's going to happen. No, you don't. You can't take it back. Nope. Out swinger. Abraham on the corner. See where Isaac Gammon is. This is where he might shine. He's got good ups. It's a good delivery. Oh, good bit. Headed high by Isaac Gammon. You called it. Just, just couldn't put it down. And it's a goal kick for the Rams. That's nice who they were looking for. Nice yeah, game. it really was. You know, I don't see much of is a, a, a crasher and a trailer uh, in, in this situation. Uh, Would have worked out pretty well. He come in a little bit uh, early for one and then trail behind on the other. Nicely played by Darogi. Yeah, Darogi and Abraham, that's quite a battle. Yeah, it really is. Casey Paul couldn't catch up to this. The Rams press it back the other way. Campbell laid that back. Nice ball played through. This could be it for the shot high. Al Salim with the quick opportunity had just a bit of daylight. You know, uh, Coney, Coney's playing the way they face right now, which is tremendous. This is a, this is IQ level high. Uh, these kids are doing a great job. Five minutes gone, one half in overtime. We have five more minutes coming up next on Munzing Media. That's a quick five. Feel like cooking dinner? Call Caps's Pizza in Farmingdale. You can make the whole family happy with our award-winning pizza, sandwiches made on fresh baked bread, delicious nachos, or salads made to order. And don't forget the whoopie pies. We pride ourselves on fast, friendly service and an overall experience that's better than you might expect from a pizza place. So order Caps just tonight. Pick it up, have it delivered, or enjoy our dining room. Give us a call at 582-0522 or enjoy the convenience of online ordering at CapsusPizza.com. Caps' Pizza provides the pizza for the player of the game. One Gardner Tigers player, always named the Caps' Pizza player of the game. And they win one free 10-inch, one-topping pizza from Caps'. Rest assured, if uh, Gardner Tigers scores the next five minutes, that's the player getting player of the game. Yeah. Braden Derogi at this point, probably the leader in the clubhouse with his goal in the 21st minute of the second half to equalize. But several Tigers have had good games today. And impressed uh, defensively by Tucker Boudreau, Jackson Boudreau both. Mm -hmm. They've played well. Darogi, though, has, uh, of course, scored the goal, but he's also been a major force in the midfield for the Gardner Tigers. He really has. Josh Jacobson, I'm going to give a shout-out to, too. He's been uh, stepping up uh, nicely. And uh, Patrick Manser. And Manser's played well in, in this contest. He's been tested a few times. It's been an even battle. The Rams have had uh, a large portion of control, really, at the end of the first half into the second. The Tigers, when they equalize, pulled back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But outside of that... Uh, 
one section of play that uh, Coney was clearly the aggressor. It's been very even. The scoreboard reflects that. Yeah, I think. See if we have a winner in the next five minutes. Yeah, I think uh, Coney's done a good job. That first first overtime uh, was clearly played by them. They they did a great job. I think they were playing the way they face. They're communicating well, and they they had a couple opportunities because of that. Busy nights uh, here for Munzing Media. We'll be at Hoke Field a lot tonight for this game. Tomorrow night, Gardner football at home against Madison. That's a six o'clock start. And on Friday, Gardner boys soccer in the afternoon, three thirty against Levitt. If you want more Gardner Tigers soccer, middle school style, <laughs> that's on Saturday afternoon after the Gardner boys play here at 10 o'clock in the morning against Marana Cook. So the Gardner Tigers playing three games in four days, and then middle school doubleheader at Halldale. And that's, that's, always, a a solid, and yep. that's always a solid tilt, Marana Cook Gardner. Yes, it I is. Mean, they split last, uh, last season. Dari Alcatea. Oh, great ball. Nice, nice one to cool. Alcatea. Sends it across the frame, and Hannah Mann and Will Campbell there. He just arrived a split second too late. Yeah, that's one you would just want to walk in, square your shoulders to the net, and walk it in. That was a tough one. Rams looking to end it right out of the opening kick of the second overtime period. And they have it again, Abraham. Freshman energy right there. He's been playing great. Nice ball to Casey Paul. Yeah, it's just tried to take that Paul outside. It's going to skip too far, or is it? Oh, good hustle by Caleb Gardner. He just ran out of space. Yeah. It's a tough one. He uh, probably would have got called if he would have kept it in for a slide tackle. All right, yeah. yeah. Well, New well, rule. With no defense, he just slid. Is it? Uh, you can't leave your feet for any reason? I don't think so. You're supposed to stay up. Okay. Yeah. So I wonder if it was a tackling situation or just no leaving your feet. I know. I, I'm not sure. I guess there's some clarity there. but Tigers working again. Can't penetrate that back three. Tough ball. Jacobson punts that high. Cameron Dewan played back to Isaac Gammon. Three and a half to go in overtime. We'll see if we have a winner. We need one in that time period. This one ends a level draw. Coming out. And that's a foul against the Gardner Tigers. The Rams will take the kick. Two hockey players going at it in the middle. Varney and Paul. Now here's oh. trouble again. Oh. A shot. Oh, oh, it's off the bar. Oh, and a nice second save. Save by, save by Patrick Manser. Manser came up and took the second one away after Ahmed Al Salim rattled the bar. Came this close to being over. I, he hit that hard enough to break it. It was a great shot. Abraham. Oh. The Tigers concede. Corner a kick. Corner of throw. Let's see that shot again. This is how close we came to this game being over. That's that far side, number 10, Al Salim. Great Takes layoff. stride, too. Oh. Nice save by Patrick Manser. Headed coming out. right down to him, and the Tigers look to counter here. Tweedy. Yep. Take a look again when we have the opportunity for that shot. We didn't want to miss a potential goal, however. Nice Will ball. Campbell. They want to go back on that left side. That'll force Manser out to make a save. That's a good thing. Get him mobile. Two Control minutes to go. Well, well done. Rams came close. We play on. Paul. Played downfield. And a throw in for the Tigers. Caleb Gardner gets it quickly. Gardner does not want to waste any time, neither the team nor the player. <laughs> Casey Paul. Well taken. That was Albadri. Yeah, it was. Good poise. Tigers bounce that ahead. It's in on Cameron Dewan. Yeah. Now Abraham. Lots 120 to go. He'll take it himself. Abraham. Abraham with a solo run. Abraham into the area. Nicely Just possessed. Josh Jacobson. Jacobson. Oh, that was great. It really was. Abraham has it back, though. Trying to swing it to the edge of the area. Did so. Tucker Boudreaux with a great stop there. Diaz is outside. Al Salim. Under a minute to go. Be a shame if no one wins this, but you'd have to say it'd be a fair result, too. Yeah, it would. Darogi. Played ahead. 
Big ball. And a big race here. Justin Perry. Smart play by Perry. Plays that outside with a ball. Oh. Played out for a corner, I think it is. Here's a chance for the Tigers. They have to hurry, though. 25 seconds. Derogi, who scored from this spot, up with the ball. He's going to have to hurry. There's Derogi. The shot and the save. Madour holds on and likely preserves the tie for his ramps. Well played. Just not enough time, you would think, for Will Campbell here. There's not. No. And that'll do it. It's going to end 1 1. Both teams with a goal. The Tigers tying it in the second half. Braden Derogi. He answered that. Ahmed Al Salim strike. And Al Salim almost won this in overtime for the Coney Rams. As he rattled that crossbar, and we'll see it here. This was close. The game inches away from being a Rams victory. And we'll watch the shot. There's Al Salim on that far side as the ball gets to him. And you just watch the velocity of this shot when he takes it. Yeah. That was a great step by the Gardner defender in a tough situation. That's a volley, too. Yep, and that's a great ball. Boom. Wow. Six inches lower, and that's in the top of the net. Yep, completely. But it's a 1-1 one -one tie. The teams can't shake hands. They'll wave across the oh. football 40-yard line. Yep. Yeah, there's that shot that so close. And Patrick Manser had to make a save off of Colby Vassell's layoff to him. Great job. So 1-1 one, one the final score. Let's name our uh, Caps' Pizza player of the game, and it really has to go to Braden Derogi. Absolutely, yeah. He's done a great job all game long. He started to get touches towards the end of the game, and, and a well-deserved goal on that corner kick to, to tie the game up. To Braden Derogi. See him down there getting a well-deserved drink on the bench. Wins a free 10-inch pizza from Caps' Pizza. One-topping pizza for the player of the game. We name a guard or Tiger player every single Tiger's home game. Garden Tiger football tomorrow night. The Madison Bulldogs in town. That's a 6 o'clock start right here on Munzing Media. And on Friday, we'll be right back here for Gardner Boys Soccer and the Levin Hornets. will make the visit to Hoke Field. That is a 3.30 start. For our entire Munzing Media camera and production crew, for my broadcast partner, Casey Johnson, my name is Rob Kennedy saying so long. From Hoke Field, 1-1 the final score. The Tigers and the Rams play to a tie. You've been watching Gardner Tigers Soccer on Munzing Media.